hi guys um so in this video i'll be showing you how to make a tsunami fascinator so i'm using fuchsia pink these are the materials you need and uh, you'll be needing your um heart molds tsunami fabric feather heart wire and so on i'll link it up in the description box so the first thing you need to do is to ensure that you cover your heart mold with a uh, clean film or any plastic bag this is to ensure that water doesn't touch the mold and it is easily detachable from the tsunami. Then get your tsunami, um, two layers of your tsunami. Ensure that you can fold it over easily. Then the next thing you need to do is to fold it over the edge. Just leave a little bit of tsunami at the edge. Then the next thing you need to do is to use push pins to attach all the edges of the tsunami to the heart block. Take your time and pin each edge in details. Pinning can be tricky but just take your time. Now that you've pinned it round, you see after it dries you spread it out to dry under the sun and after it dries you see that it's easy for you to remove your cinnamon from the heart mold when you've done that ensure you trim off the edges leaving just 1.5 inches remove all the push pins and then you can remove your tsunami from the heart mode once it's dried. So, I just turned it around so you can also see that one more time. You remove it carefully. And you can see that the tsunami already has the shape of the heart mode. The next set of things you need will be your heart wire, your ferrules, tape rule, and your plier. So you can use metal heart wire or plastic. I'm using metal in this case. Take a tape rule and measure round the edge of the fascinator base. You can use a push pin to just attach the tape to the fascinator carefully. And then you go round carefully. Ensure that it is exactly at the edge of it. But if you don't have ferrules, make sure you leave at least one inch or one and a half inches extra. Now you're measuring this so that you can also get the exact measurement on the heart wire. And when you do this, you use your plier to cut it carefully. Now that you have cut it, then you can just turn it around and you see if it's it is going to fit into your hat or fascinator base. Just do this carefully so that your fascinator or hat base keeps its shape. So now we're going to use ferrules to attach both sides of the wire together. Ferrules are tiny metal pieces that are used to join metal wires like heart wires together. If you don't have this, you can um, ensure that you measure 
one inch or one and a half inches extra of your arts wire so that it can overlap and then use a transparent cello tip to join it together but I find that using ferrules is actually easier and is neater. So now you need to just use wet glue, just pop in the edge of the hot wire into uh, wet glue, and then you pop in the one side of the ferrule. You also do the same thing for the second side. Before doing this, ensure that it is exactly the same size of your heart base or fascinator base. I'm just checking one more time to be exactly sure. If it's not the exact one, just use your plier to cut off the extra edge. Now I've done that, I've seen that it's actually the same um, size and then I'm just going to pop it in carefully. Repeat the same process, pop in the edge of the wire into wet glue and then you Add it to the second side of the ferrules. Yeah. You can also use a plier to press down on the ferrule to just ensure that it is actually very firm. Now get your needle and thread. So you're going to use it to um, create running stitches all around the edge of the fascinator base and the purpose of this is to ensure that the wire is held in. So I like to double my thread to just ensure that it's very strong. So you can double the thread. I also prefer to use long needles because it's easier to hold and actually you can't misplace it so easily unlike small needles yes yeah, so and just pop it in tie up its loose ends and then begin your running stitches Ensure that the end of the thread is actually knotted properly so that when you begin to stitch, it doesn't pull out easily. Take your time to stitch. Another tip before you actually stitch is to um, press down all the edges of the fascinator. I prefer to use just my fingers to do it. You can use your iron but you must be very careful that the iron doesn't touch the body of the heart so it doesn't flatten it. So for it to be neat, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm simply placing the needle very close to the point where the thread comes out from. 
so at the top is really neat and you can't even see it but underneath i'm going to do a running stitch i'm going to make it really big so that we can cover the brim easily so i'm just going to do the same thing over and over again until the edge is stitched in and the wire is secure Just take your time to stitch. now the next thing we're going to do is to get um excess cinnamon and cut out one inch wide and just cut a really long strip so you can cover the edge of your fascinator so the purpose of this strip that is being cut out is to cover um the stitches on the underside of your fascinator so the stitches are not showing and you have a neat and finished look. In some cases where you don't have a long strip, you might have to cut up to two strips, but that's okay. The most important thing is that you join them neatly and that's all. So um, the next thing you do here is to fold this one inch strip, you fold it into two equal parts. So at this point you can also use your iron to flatten it out or you can just fold it as I'm doing here. So we, we don't have any uh, unfinished seam picking out. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to pick out um, feathers. You can decide to shape your feathers, but I'm not doing that. So um, cut out cinnamon strips 4 inches long and 1 inch wide. And they are going to serve as the base for your feathers. I find that doing this makes it actually neat instead of directly pasting it onto the fascinator base. So you just follow the shapes of the feathers depending on what you want, the final look you want. And then um, use glue to arrange it on the strip. So. It's also important to note that for feathers, using horse glue is actually the best. And use horse glue, except if you're using super glue, but I don't like using super glue at all for 
only of my box because I mean you can do something I want to adjust it so you use hot glue to arrange them one by one you can put as many feathers as you want and then there are also different types of feathers out there it depends on what you actually want I want something that is a little bit full and quite dense. That's why I picked this kind of feather. And this particular feather is actually easy to find compared to some other types. Yeah, so this is what we have. So we're going to use the second strip to cover that edge so you can't see anything. Right. So what we're going to do now is to also use hot glue and just stick it down. I place the hot glue just at some points, at some key points, so we don't have hot glue all over the place. So you can trim off any feather that gets out of its way yeah that's it so you can do as many as you want i just want one um part of feathers so now you're going to look at where you're going to attach it to the heart that really look good but i think i want it upturned yeah so so yeah it has this look so the next thing i'm going to do is to use needle and thread to attach it to the base of the heart so you can stitch from the middle and then take it to both edges You can use a bed cage veil, also known as French veil, to also embellish the heart. I want something really full, and so I'm going to use a really long um, length to embellish the heart. So basically, what you just need to do is to pleat, is to pleat the edges of the French veil. And it's important to know you can also use another color. For instance, using a black veil here would have been actually nice. But I just want something that is a uniform color. So pleat along the edges continuously. You can actually omit this. And you can also use a very short length. I used about um, 22 inches here. You can use something short. So you pleat along the edges first and then you stitch it with needle and thread. You're still going to um, bring in the edges, but this is the first step. I'm sure that you tie up the edges of the thread properly. And that's it. So the next thing now is to attach this uh, veil to the fascinator. So I'm just going to attach it underneath the feathers. You may want to do this first before attaching the feathers, but 
this is also um good so you can actually pinpoint where your feathers would be first before attaching the veil so you use your needle and thread to attract attach it to it and that's it so the next thing now you can see i folded the edge of that side so i'm going to do the same thing here so you take it in just pleat it in and then you'd use needle and thread to stitch it together but ensure that it's underneath the feather so the feather covers all um the edges yeah so that's what the top looks like so the next thing we're going to be doing is that uh, we can still use extra feathers so just cover up this um straight line it's optional anyway but you can decide to do that if you want to cover it up so once you're through with that you can now cut out um elastic hat elastic depending on the measurement of the uh, wearer's head you can use something like maybe 14 inches it just depends there's no fixed measurement for that there are also um ready made hat elastics that don't need this measurement they're just regular um, measurements already so you cut that out and then using the entry to attach it to the center of your fascinator some people attach it to the edge but i i feel the center is just the best and then that's it it's the fascinator is ready and you can wear it to be a wedding party or just celebratory outing and that's it it definitely adds a pop of color to your outfits and it's a really beautiful um accessory so you can see what it finally looks like that's the base you can see the second base on top that's the uh, bed kit veil and this is what it looks like from the back you can see the feathers and you can see i um used a pink elastic so just to give it a uniform look so that's it. I hope you enjoyed um, today's video. I'll be doing more, so please subscribe to this channel.